Hey guys, uh, in this session we're going to be looking at the whole exam paper from 2014 for the level 1 algebra. Uh, this was done on day 1. Okay, so let's get started. Alright guys, so for this question you've been asked to simplify this equation. So first we look at uh, uh, 5 and well, there's no other number there, so the, number, the coefficient of this equation is going to be 5. Next we look at uh, m and m, m squared and m cubed. This could be written as m to the power of 5. And finally, we look at n and n squared. Now, remember that n has a little 1 attached to it. That's why you know we don't write n to the power of 1. So n to the power of 1 times n to the power of 2, that's going to be n to the power of 3. So that's what our final answer is in this case. 5m to the power of 5 and n to the power of 3, which should get you n achieved. OK, next question. We have solved 4a cubed equals to 32. So I've got 4a cubed equals 32. The first thing I want to do is divide both sides by 4. And when I do this, I end up with a cubed equals to 8. So at this point, I'm actually looking for a number when multiplied by itself three times, it's equal to 8. Now, you know, you might already know what the answer is. So you can put down your answer straight away as a equals to 2. Now, like I said in my previous videos, if you don't know how to do this, just go 1 times 1 times 1. Always look for, uh, because it's a cubed, you got to do it 3 times. Well, this is 1. Uh, if you do 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. So that's how you know a is equal to 2. Uh, that is classified as an achieved. All right now, another way you could write a as well is from this step here. You could have potentially written it like this. A is equal to cube root of 8, which is also uh, an acceptable answer here. Cool. That's it for this one. We go to the next one. Okay. So with this question, you've been asked to solve for x. So I'm just going to write down the equation first, guys. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that 2. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, which means my left hand side is going to equal 16, and then on my right hand side I've got 5x minus 4. Next, I'm going to add 4 to both sides, uh, and what I should get is 20 equals to 5x, and then divide both sides by 5, and I should get x is equal to 4. Okay, and this question is an achieved question, and but looking at the schedule, um, yeah, it's, even if you just get, give the correct answer, they accept just the correct answer as well. Okay, so this is 2014. Remember that um, things have changed in 2015 and six, um, 16, so keep that in mind. Okay, we go to the next question. So in this question, we've been asked to factorize this equation. So the first thing you really want to be doing is looking at this equation and look for uh, your like terms. Okay. So having a look at this, um, I've got a squared b here, and I've got another a squared b there. So I can actually combine this to write this as a cubed b squared, and then now I can write down minus 2 a squared b. That's um, looking at these two terms here. Okay, so this is the first step, but they're actually asking you to factorize. And because they're asking you to factorize, you need to take out the common factors. Now looking at a cubed and a squared, I can see that a squared is this. So I'm looking at just the uh, a's. Well, there's no numbers, so I don't have to worry about any numbers. So I'm only looking at a cubed and a squared. Uh, so a squared is a common factor. Then I look at b squared and b. b is a common factor which means I could write this as uh, a, b, minus 2. And this is what my final answer should be, which is fully factorized and simplified. So if you have your final answer as this, you are looking at um, a merit grade. But if you left your answer here in this line, then you're looking at an achieved. Now, some people also tend to do this where they factorize the top line here, because when they see factorize, they go, oh yeah, I'm just taking our common common factors. So they actually do this, uh, a squared b 
3 plus AB minus phi. So this is not fully simplified. So again, this is only going to get you a grade of achieved. However, looking at the 3 and negative 5, I'm looking at the 3 and negative 5, you can take it one more step and you can do it as a squared b uh, and then you'd get ab minus 2 because 3 minus 5 is 2. Now that would get you a merit and that is also the same answer as what we have here. Cool, that's it for this question guys. Uh, we go to the next one. Alright, so in this question we've got Mark has worked twice as, hours, as many hours as James and if James had worked another 48 hours he would have worked twice as long as Mark. So the first thing I'm going to look at is it says Mark had worked twice as many hours as James. So if I actually have a little table here, all right, if James works one hour, Mark works two. If James works two hours, Mark works four. If James works J hours, then Mark would work 2J. So I guess that's the first equation that you have. M is equal to 2J. So that's basically looking at this line here. Now the second line, it says if James had worked another 48 hours, he would have worked twice as long as Mark. So I'm going to write it like this. So James, first take down James' hours, whatever hours he's actually worked. Now it says if he worked another 48 hours, so that means whatever hours James worked plus 48 hours is the same as, and it says he would have worked twice as long as Mark, which means if he works another 48 hours, he works twice the hours of um, Mark that, that Mark's actually worked. So now what we have is we've got a set of simultaneous equations and we actually need to solve this. So because m is equal to 2j, what I can do is I can replace uh, m where, where m is here with 2j. So this equation then would look like this. j plus 48 equals 2 multiplied by 2j. And that's because m is equal to 2j. Okay, in the green box you can see there. So rearranging this equation, I'm going to have j plus 48 equals 4j. Okay, so minus j on both sides. So I've got minus j there and minus j there. And what I end up with is 48 equals 3j. And then divide both sides by 3. And I should end up with j equals 2, 16. So James has actually worked 16 hours, but if you go back to the third line, um, the question actually asks how many more hours Mark worked than James. So I actually got to figure out how much um, Mark, Mark actually worked. Now that equation is here, Mark is equal to 2J. So then I can say Mark worked 2 times 16, which means Mark, Mark worked 32 hours. But the question itself is asking, that uh, how many more hours Mark worked than James. So we can write that as uh, Mark worked, because 32 minus 16 is 16. So Mark worked 16 hours more than James. Okay, so you need to have the correct conclusion uh, for the difference in number of hours worked, and that will get you an excellence. All right, and if you solve one of them, so either you solve a Mark's hours or James's hours, um, then it looks like it's a merit. Um, but you got to have equations. All right, so having one equation will get you an achieved. So either this or this. And also you can do a guess and check. And if you just write the answer with guess and check, um, you're probably just looking at an achieved grade as well. Okay, let's go to the next question. All right, so we have an inequality in this um, situation here. So just a bit of a quick reminder for inequalities. Uh, you treat it exactly like an equal sign, um, and the only time you ever need to worry about the symbol changing is when you actually divide by a negative number. And I'll actually go through it um, in this little question. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the 3. So I multiply both sides by 3. And so the two 3's cancel on the left-hand side. And what I have is 4x minus 6 is greater than 
Now be very careful here guys because a lot of people what they do is um, they only multiply 3 with um, 2x and so they write the answer as 6x plus 1. It's a common mistake we see because people forget that the, the 3 is being multiplied by the whole thing. So I'm actually going to write that out first just so just so that we don't actually forget the, um, that when we multiply that, when we expand the bracket, you get the whole thing gets affected. So then we got 4x minus 6 is greater than 6x because 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times 1 is 3. And now it's just a matter of rearranging things. So I'm going to subtract negative 6x from both sides. And what I have is 2x minus 6 is greater than 3. And then I need to add 6 to both sides to get rid of the, eliminate the negative 6. So I have 2x, oops, sorry, made a mistake. I've got 4 minus 6 is minus 2x. So really it should be minus 2x is greater than 9. And I guess this is the only time you need to concern yourself about changing of the symbols because I'm dividing by negative 2 on both sides. So therefore, I'm going to get x. And this is the only time, as I said, the symbol actually changes the other way. 9 divided by negative 2. Uh, you can leave your answer as 9 divided by negative 2, negative 9 over 2, or negative 4.5. You know, it's any one of those combinations you could really have. And that should actually get you a merit. Okay, so in terms of achieved, if you had written instead of, uh, let's say you got the, uh, the wrong symbol, or if you had put it as x equals to, uh, if you had written something like this, you know, sometimes I tell people, you know, oh, don't worry about the symbol, change it to an uh, equals and then work it right through. So sometimes what the people, uh, some people forget to actually worry, uh, change the sign and they leave the answer as 9 over 2. And if you had, if you are one of those people that did that, then you're only looking at an achieved. Okay. All right. So that's it for this question, guys. We go to the next one. Uh, this has to be one of my favorite questions. I always say to students that, you know, if you, if you ever see a question like this, you should really be, you should know how to do this because it's one of the more easier excellence questions um, that you will find. But anyway, but, you know, you're always going to get people that actually do this. And I guarantee this, what people do is this, r squared minus 1, r squared plus r. And then the first thing they start, they start, uh, you know, the, the brain start lighting up. They're like, ooh, r squared and r squared, that cancels out. And then their final answer is negative 1 over r. Right? I guarantee you, people that actually attempt this question, most of the time they actually do this. Okay? But um, if you've been watching the videos or if you actually know factorizing, then you know that this is actually incorrect. Why? Because if you look at the numerator, the first thing you can really, you should really see is that it's a difference of two squares, which means the numerator you could actually write as r minus one and r plus one. And now the denominator is r squared plus r. Because r is a common factor, you can take out r and r plus one. And now you can get uh, cancelling happy and cancel out your r plus one and r plus one which means your final answer is r minus 1 divided by r. Okay, so in terms of grades, as I said, two-step, I don't think you get an excellence question for two-step, but that's excellence here. If we get to this stage, uh, merit is doing both of them, factorizing both of the top and the numerator. Uh, for achieved, it's one of, one of them, either the numerator or the denominator factorizing that all right easiest excellence question that I've ever worked with in um, MCAT all right guys that's question one for us we go to question two next all right guys so with this question we've been asked to factorize this um, quadratic so we're basically looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 40 and add up to negative um, 3 <laughs> So the only combination that in this case could be is negative 8 and positive 5. Okay, and that is an achieved question. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much, there's nothing more we can do about it. Now, some people, what they end up doing is um, uh, they kind of think of this, even though it says factorize, some of them actually continue to do this, where they start putting this equal to 0 and actually solving it. So sometimes they do this equals to 0 and then they go x is equal to 8 or negative 5. Um, 
in the answering uh, in the answer schedule they've actually said that do not penalize um, but again don't waste time just read the question yeah, if it says solve then you're actually looking for answer if it says factorize then you really just stop here okay so next question uh, we've got Sam is paid to work at a chemist shop after school he receives an extra dollar for each delivery he makes extra two dollars for each delivery he makes one day he makes five deliveries and is paid twenty five dollars uh, and they're asked to give you the formula for the wages that he receives each day okay guys so with this question all you know is that you know he gets paid two dollars for each delivery okay now after five deliveries so after five deliveries he's actually made twenty five dollars okay so you can kind of what you need to do is like figure out how much he's actually getting paid um, without the delivery um, so because he's actually made five deliveries all right so that means and he gets two dollars for each delivery so you can say five times two is ten dollars so that's the extra money that he's actually earned the ten dollars so almost think about it like this he gets um, ten dollars for the delivery and if you go 25 take away 10 you're gonna get fifteen dollars so what that means is that his pay is fifteen dollars the base salary plus two dollars extra for each delivery so we can write his um, basically we can write his wages as fifteen dollars that he gets at the start plus two dollars for every delivery now you can test it out because after five deliveries, five times two is five times two is ten. Ten plus fifteen is twenty-five, and that means that works out after he makes five deliveries. So that's the equation there. So this um, equation to actually get to this stage is actually a merit. Um, now I know in the answer schedule there is um, another way they've actually done this, but you know, like I said, in algebra there's multiple ways to get to the equation. Um, and yeah so this is one of those ways so with number two you've asked to make D the subject of the formula you wrote in part one so basically all they're asking you to do is rearrange this equation so you've got P equals 15 uh, plus 2d so subtracting 15 from both sides and I've got P minus 15 equals 2d and then divide both sides by 2 and I have D equals P minus 15 divided by 2 is what D is. <clears throat> and this gets you an achieved. All right, so we go to the next question, folks. Okay, so we've got this question where Emma says that her height is at least as much as a younger sister's plus a quarter as much again. Write an equation to express Emma's height in terms of a sister. Okay, so the way we have it is we've got Emma's height is going to be greater than or equal to. So that, that's what that um, the symbol here. Actually, wait, let me do it like this. So Emma's age is at least. So at least we're going to write like that. At least as much as her younger sister's age. So that's going to be S uh, plus. So I'm looking at here. So plus. Uh, what color should we use next okay this one quarter as much again okay that means we've got quarter of her sister's age again so that's basically your first um, equation now this can be left as this way which is unsimplified and I think this will get you um, an achieved but I'm um, actually I'll talk a little bit more about the grades later but let's just leave it as this all right now you can simplify this equation so you can simplify this as uh, because one quarter can be written as 0 0.25 so which means this would become 1.25 s okay so the next thing they say is uh, Emma's sister's height is 96 centimeters find Emma's height so we can go back to our equation that we made so Emma's height is greater than or equal to 1.25 s so because they actually tell you that the sister's height is 96 we can write Emma's height is greater than or equal to 1.25 times 96. When you do this, you actually get um, greater than or equal to 120. Okay. Um, 
how do I do 1.25 times 96? Uh, let's see, what's another way of doing this? You could actually do it in the first equation, because you know how you got E is greater than or equal to S plus a quarter S. So you can actually write that as greater than or equal to 96 plus 96 divided by 4. And 96 divided by 4, just do it twice, like uh, divide 96 by 2 twice. So 96 divided by 2 is 48, 48 divided by 2 is 24. And that's how you get that value e is greater than or equal to 120. Okay, so that's your second part of the question. The third part of the question, it says, use your answer from C2 to describe in words how Emma's height compares with her sister. All right, so there's a couple of ways you could answer this question. The first way you could answer it is um, Emma is at least 120 centimeters tall. Uh, you could have also said Emma is at least 24 centimeters taller than her sister. All right, those are the two answers that you could have possibly given. So this question was um, a bit of a uh, funny little question because um, uh, it only had one grade for this entire question. So you either got an excellence if you got this part right uh, in, with, with an equation. Uh, if you got to somewhere here, uh, you were looking at a merit and just for the equation, you were looking at an achieved. Yeah, so there's um, lots of different ways this combination could work, guys. So please check the answer schedule just to see if one of your combinations gets you the grade that you are looking for. Cool. That's it for this question. We go to the next one. All right, guys. So with this question, you've been given an equation for uh, an n-sided polygon where D represents the number of diagonals. All right. And you've also been given the formula, which is n over 2 times n minus 3. Now they're asking you to figure out how many sides the polygon has if there are 20 diagonals. All right, so that means we've got D equals to 20, and they're asking us what is N going to be. So I'm going to replace D here with 20, and what I have is N over 2 times N minus 3. Now looking at it, now most of you guys might be wondering, oh, how am I going to do this? Um, always, guys, if, if I'm sure of something um, like a big equation like this, just expand, um, expand it out to a format that you would know. Now you got n and n, so like I'm looking at it right here, n times n. So there's a very good chance you're going to end up with a quadratic, which means you got to put it equal to zero and solve it. So that's all I'm going to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by two because I don't like that two in the denominator. So then this would be 40 equals, and because the two twos they cancel out, I've got 40 equals n times n minus three. Now I need to expand the bracket. So n times n is n squared. So that's my n squared there. And then n times minus 3 is minus 3n. Now this could be written where 0 equals n squared minus 3n minus 40. Now it's quite strange that they decided to give this particular quadratic uh, in this question. Because if you actually look at question 2a, this was the exact same quadratic that we actually had. We had actually got x squared minus 3x minus 40. So you kind of have already done this at the start of this paper. Uh, and if you did it, did it right then, you're most likely going to do it right here. So from here, we have 0 equals, now we need to factorize. So two numbers that multiply to negative 40 and add to negative 3 is going to be negative 8 and positive 5. So at this point, we need to actually work out... Um, the values of n. So you've either got n minus 8 equals to 0 or n plus 5 equals to 0. Now n minus 8 equals 0, n is equal to 8. With n plus 5 equals to 0, n equals to negative 5. Now it's really important guys at this point that you understand that you can't actually have negative 5 as one of the answers because you can't really have, you know, you can have eight sides, but you can't have negative five sides. So what you're actually going to say is, um, you can just say, well, well, n 
n can't be negative 5. Um, a number of sides, number of sides must be positive. Number of sides must be positive. So therefore, n equals to eight sides. Okay. Really important that you make this last bit of connection because that is what that's going to get you to an excellence. Okay. If your equation is factorized and equals to zero, uh, you could get to a merit. Okay. But even if you just put n equals 8 or negative 5, you're probably looking at a merit there. Uh, achieved, for achieved, 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 um, equation rearranged. So I'm guessing, by the looks of it, possibly somewhere here. All right, rearranged equation. Or if you guess and check the answer as well, you get, you get a grade for that. All right, cool. That's it for question 2, by the looks of it. We got a question 3, guys next all right so with this uh, question you've actually been asked to simplify and that usually means write it in the same denominator so you've got seven and five so seven and five the lowest common multiple is going to be 35 all right so that means I need to multiply the numerator here by seven the denominator here by seven and on the other side I need to multiply the numerator by five and the denominator by five when I do this 5 times 3x is 15x divided by 35 plus 2x times 7 is 14x divided by 35. Now, because they have the both have the same denominators, I can actually put them together like this, which means my final answer is 28x, 29x over 35. And that will get you an achieved. Now, really important, if you actually give an answer without an x, it actually means not achieved, all right? Because it's not what the question is actually asking you. All right, next one. We have simplified 2x squared to the power of cube. Uh, 2x squared to the power of cube. That doesn't make sense. 2x squared cubed. So that means we've... You can do this the long, fashion, the long method, which would be 2x squared multiplied by 2x squared multiplied by 2x squared. And when you do this, you actually get 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And x squared times x squared times x is x to the power of 6. Okay, so the final answer we're looking for is 8x6. Now, let's say you go straight from here to here. That's absolutely fine. Okay, just don't, you don't need to do that middle part, but I'm just giving ideas for people just to make sure that they can actually do this. Okay, let's go to the next one. We've got solve this question with uh, 3 times 2 to the power of a minus 1 is 96. So the first thing I really want to be doing in this case is getting rid of the 3. So divide by 3 on both sides. And what I end up with, 2 to the power of a minus 1 equals 32. Now, the way I've been teaching people is um, I say to them, can you replace 32 with 2 to the power of something? So, you know, long, long fashion way, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, 2 to the power of 5 is 32. And because 2 to the power of 5 equals 32, what I can then do is write this as 2 to the power of a minus 1 equals 2 to the power of 5. And the reason I do this is because if the bases are the same, then the powers must be the same. So I can write this as a minus 1 equals 5. And when I rearrange this, so plus 1 on both sides, I actually end up with a equals to 6. Okay. So when, once I get a equals to 6, you're looking at a grade of a merit. If you just put just the answer only without any kind of working, then you're only going to get an achieved. And I think if you get to this stage here, you can also get an achieved. Okay, that's it for this question, guys. We go to the next one. All right. So with this question, we've actually been given a little uh, table here. And they've actually given us, you know, what the formula is here. Looking at the formula here, okay, t equals n squared minus n plus 23. The first question is asking, what's the value of t for the 12th term in the sequence? Okay, now, in all honesty, you could, you could have taken this. I mean, if you have no idea of how to do this, basically what the question is asking you is, if n equals to 12, what is t? 
Now, if you want to do this the long-winded way, you can actually look at the difference of these two numbers. So this is plus 2, this is plus 4, plus 6, plus 8. And you literally can keep going all the way down to 12 to actually work out what the answer is. Okay? That's one way of doing it. That's a long way of doing this. The shorter way is actually doing this. So because t equals n squared minus n plus 23, we can write this as t equals, because we're looking n is 12, so we can write that as 12 squared minus 12 plus 23. Now 12 squared is equal to 144. So we got 144 minus 12 plus 23. And then this could be written as t is equal to 155. Okay. So once you get to that 155, you're looking at um, an achieved grade. Okay, so let's go to the next question. All right, so it, in this question, you, they basically are giving you some facts. Uh, that is, some of the numbers in the sequence are prime numbers. A prime number is one that can be only divided by one in itself. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys would have covered prime numbers, but just in case you've forgotten, one is not a prime number. Two is. Two is because 2 can 2 has only uh, 1 times 2, uh, 3 is, 4 is not, uh, 5 is, 7 is, um, 9 is not, 11 is, and so on. Okay, so what they're really asking is, for the sequence of numbers, they're giving you the formula where t squared, t equals n squared minus n plus a. They're saying that if n equals to a, then t will never be a prime number. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the equation down. So I've got n squared minus n plus a now they're saying if n equals to a okay if n equals to a then t will never be a prime number now if they're saying if n equals to a i could also rewrite this as a equals to um like the last value is equal to n then this could be written as t equals n squared minus n plus n Okay, so all I've done is I've just replaced um, n with a. So what 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 happens now is if I actually simplify this equation because I've got negative n here and positive n they disappeared, and that would mean t is equal to n squared. Now n squared is not a prime number because you think about it. Uh, let's say uh, two squared, two squared is four, three squared is nine, uh, five squared is twenty-five. If you look at the factors, you're going to get 1 times 4, 2 times 2, 1 times uh, 9, and 3 times 3. Look at 25, 1 times 5, and 5 times 5. So they're all going to have, sorry, 1 times 25 there. They're all going to have three, uh, three factors. All right, so therefore, you can actually say that, uh, you can say that n squared uh, will always be, uh, well, will always be, well, will always have, let's put it this way, will always have 1, n squared, and n as its factors. So it cannot be prime. Okay, and basically it's just the idea that you understand that um, n squared cannot be prime number and you actually show it um, somewhere here okay so grades wise uh, this is getting you a merit uh, and if you even do this part here gets you to an achieved okay let's go to the next question guys so the third question they actually say if t equals this and r equals that write an equation for r in terms of t now let's say you've got no idea of how to solve this. Um, they're asking for a link between r and t, right? So look at this big, big, big equation for r. Because we have r is equal to 5n minus 4 multiplied by n plus 1 minus 2n times 2n plus 3 plus 4n plus 1 minus 3. Now, start expanding, all right? So 5n times n that's going to be 5n squared. 5n times plus 1 is going to be 5n. Negative 4 times n is negative 4n. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. 
Now I do these two brackets. I've got negative 2n multiplied by 2n would be minus 4n squared. Negative 2n times 3 would make it negative 6n. Then this part here, 4 times n is 4n. 4 times 1 is plus 4. And then I have the minus 3 by itself. So now I need to simplify this. Okay, So I'm going to look at all my n squareds. Uh, what have I got? I've got, there's an n squared here, there's an n squared here. That's it. So this is going to be 5n minus 4 is n squared. Next, I'm going to look at all my n's. So I've got 5n minus 4n is 1n. 1n plus 4n is 5n minus 6n. And all these numbers combined is going to give me minus 1n. Then I look at all my numbers. I've got minus 4 and plus 4, which is 0. And all I have left over is minus 3. Okay, So R can be written as n squared minus n minus 3. Now if I look at T, T is actually n squared minus n plus 5. So what I could actually do is I could actually rearrange, um, because I'm looking at the n squared minus n and n squared minus n. So I'm going to write t in terms of this. So I'm going to write this like this. So t minus 5 equals n squared minus n. Okay. The reason I did that was because I want to have n squared minus n by itself. Once I do that, I could take this, this part and actually put it in here. So that means r now, and because of writing n squared minus n, I could write it as t minus 5 because you see that's what n squared minus n is t minus 5 and then minus 3 so I could actually write as t equals t minus 8 sorry r equals t minus 8 <laughs> so in terms of grades you are looking at excellence for the last one uh, fully simplified is a merit so I'm guessing somewhere here is merit and Getting one of these brackets correct, either that or that, you are looking at um, and achieved by the looks of it. Cool. That's it for this question. We go to the next one, folks. All right. So next question, we've got using the formula t equals n squared minus n plus blah, blah, blah. Find the value of n when equal t equals 91. So this question is very similar to the diagonals question that we did earlier on. So all we have is t equals to 91. And we have n squared minus n plus 1. So putting this as 0 equals n squared minus n plus 1 minus 91. We're going to get 0 equals n squared minus n minus 90. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to minus 90 and actually add up to negative 1. And I've got negative 10 and positive 9. So with this, I've got n minus 10 equals 0 or n plus 9 equals 0, which means n is equal to 10 and n equals to minus 9. All right. Now, remember that uh, n has to be positive. Um, so just kind of make that statement that n has to be um, n in this case equals to 10. Well, it could be negative, but um, because you could have terms that go before that. But anyway, we'll just leave n equals to 10 in this case. And folks, in terms of grades, uh, you do get merit uh, forming and solving, and I think you do get a merit if you do give a minus 9 and 10 or just 10 as well. So either either or either. Uh, correct rearrangement gets you to uh, an achieved. So somewhere in this line gets you to an achieved. Okay, let's go to the last question. All right, so in this question, they're asking you why this particular quadratic will never give a prime number value for t. So the first thing to understand is, remember that for prime number, okay, for prime number, you need uh, the number itself, for the factors, you get number and one. So one of the um, uh, factors has to equal one, and the other one has to be the number itself. So what I'm gonna do in this question is I'm gonna factorize this, because n squared minus n minus six, I'm going to factorize this, and this is going to be 
So what two numbers multiply to negative 6 and add to minus 1? I got n minus 3 and n plus 2. Okay? So, so this is where, I mean, I know the schedule actually says that t is a product of two numbers. Um, therefore, you can't actually, um, you know, it can't be a prime number. But what I'm trying to prove here is that, look, if you have two factors, because these are two factors, n minus 3 and n plus 2, okay? Now, if we actually say n minus 3 equals to 1, let's say n minus 3 equals to 1. If that's the case, then n would equal to 4, okay? That means if I put t equals 4 minus 3 multiplied by 4 plus 2, what I end up getting is 1 and 6, which means my answer is actually going to be, um, my t is going to be 6, and this is not prime, okay? And if I put n plus 2 equals to 1, then n would become, uh, what do we got, 3? No, not 3, negative 3? No, what am I doing? Negative 1, sorry. Then my t would equal negative 1 minus 3 multiplied by negative 1 plus 2, which equals to negative 4 times 1, which equals negative 4. Again, this is not a prime number. Okay? And because of that, we've actually, what we've done is we've actually proven that one of the factors can't be 1, because if one of the factors is 1, then the other number is going to be um, a composite number. So just write it up as a statement um, in this case. So if, let's just put it like this, if one, if one factor equals 1, then other factor is not a prime number. And so t will never be a prime number. Okay, so that's what you are basically um, doing in this particular question. So in terms of excellence, you, uh, for your kind of idea, uh, factorize gets you an achieved. So those people that are, you know, looking at excellence question going, I'm not going to attempt this. Just look at that equation and you should be able to factorize. Even if you just factorize, you get achieved. Okay, you can do a guess and check method in this. Um, and if you do two substitutions with guess and check, you get an achieved. And um, correct generalization is a merit. But again, it's, it's just getting the ideas and putting it all together, guys. Well, in saying that, that's pretty much all I have for this paper. Uh, so thank you for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions, pop it in the comment section below. And as I say in all my videos, um, guys, um, you know, you got to make an attempt at all the questions. All right. You never know where you're going to pick up like little U's and little R's from. You never know. And um, yeah, good luck for your exams. And yeah, thank you for watching.